Aloha everyone, it's Christina on the mat here at Shala Santosha Ashtanga Yoga Therapy and Wellness. So another request for this amazing primary series of the Yoga Chikitsa Ashtanga family, the Bhuja Tadasana. So oftentimes it's a difficulty to jump around the arms when we are leading the practice to a lead class, a guided you know, flow. And oftentimes, of course, it's best to practice it in the Mysore tradition, which is an individual pacing that happens in a small group setting where the teacher is present and also working with you. But it doesn't hurt to have some tips and tutorials on the side to work on it as a homework. So here we are, and today I'm just going to show you a few um, areas on how I found it personally for myself to grow to enjoy jumping around my arms and building the strength to jump into the puja one day at a time. Although these tips and tutorials might not lead you there in exactly today, but if you keep working on it, I can almost assure you that you'll be seeing some amazing transformation. So I'm already sweating because <laughs> it's warm and mappy. And it's perfect for puja because I need to open it up to come through the practice. Um, basically, you want to do this, of course, it's done in the middle of the practice of primary full series. So by that time, your body has produced a lot of tapas, heat, and therefore your joints are lubricated and you're more mobile and agile and fluid, right, to get into it. But here are some options that I do to learn how to jump myself around. So this is, again, when you're already proficient and you can hop all the way to the front of your mat and we're working on how to catch it around the arms so that you can just hook your feet and go right into the flow of the practice. So the first one is I'm going to face my mat this way and I'm just going to show those that aren't jumping yet quite strong how to get around it. I like to take my hips is still going to stay up as you can see my butt's pointing in the air but my knees are down. Coming and just trying to hop way in front of the hands and then again working through that, okay? Don't get too close to the hand. You want to kind of space it out and go more forward. The second part is drishti. There's a power in the gaze. That's why in our practice, we call it tristana, which is bandhas, breath, pranayama, and drishti, the gaze. Don't look in, don't look up, don't turn right or left. Keep your third eye drishti and your center and your focus at one steadiness from the moment you set up, which is where I am now, to the moment I jump around. So when I'm here, my gaze doesn't switch. I'm already ready and I just sit back and then I can hook my feet and then eventually take my head down to the floor. If I keep moving my head up and down, and a lot of times I see people doing buja looking like this, and then they jump in and their head is so heavy weighing them down to the front that the, the center of balance and gravity goes boom and they crash down to the floor. So you want to keep your plane, your back, your transverse, right, all the way center. Don't dip the head to plateau the body going to crash down on the ground or butt on the behind from the floor. All right. So again, just learning that. So let's do it again one more time and then we'll work on jumping around without touching the feet on the floor. And that's the essence of this tutorial. So when I'm here, I'm gonna first land my feet in the front, look at my head, I'm already in the front. I'm gonna not crunch all the way down, but I'm gonna crunch enough to get my hip to float me up high and give me some momentum here. Look up, look at my face, it's up. And again, if I'm starting to come down and my head or the top of my forehead will come up. It's the same thing for coming up. You want to lengthen your space so that you can move your feet and your whole body to levitate up to create bakasana to exit and shoot back into the pose. It is such a delicate pose. It's going to take time to be patient and understand it, but you have to keep practicing it so that you can understand it and grow on that part. Okay, so you move this this way so then you can see it. 
a little bit better, coming to wrap around. Ooh, so warm in Maui. It's like 80 degrees, I think, today. Or 90. <laughs> so here I am. And when I come around, my goal is not to get my feet to even scuff the floor. I want to try to activate it and be on the air with my foot. So here I go. I'm going to come into here. I'm going to dip a little bit again with my hip, hinge, my knee, and catching it. So I wrapped it around this way. Okay? That's the first step. And then again, drawing it back. It's not going to happen all the time. What I'm thinking is when I'm already back here, if Bhuja Padasana means to pin in the shoulders, my inner thighs, my abductors is already ignited with papas from the back that when I'm almost close to wrapping around my, my whole outside of my leg, I'm already activated to go like a big hug. And then the interlace of the feet holds on to the practice. Okay, so let's try it again. Here we go. Like I said, it might not happen all the time, but if it does, be grateful, look forward. And here it comes, jumping into the position. Squat the knees softly, squeeze the inner thighs, hug, and interlace. Yes, and then slowly, you're gonna come with your chin forward. And then soon, the head will situate down. And then when you lift up, you're going to walk your feet back, and then again, they'll shoot back to the chaturanga. Um, it is not easy. So you have to follow your breathing too, because there's a lot of kumbha ka that happens in the practice. What is that Sanskrit word? The ability to lock your inhale or your exhale at the end of it, and hold it while you position, then you're either releasing in four, an inhale or an exhale again into the relaxation of the pose. So again, it's a tricky thing. Um, I do the kumbhaka when I go around my leg and then I release my kumbhaka at my crown of the head down the floor when I'm doing a breath of one, two, right, three, four, five. I do a lift and then an inhale and then a kumbhaka again to get my feet to bakasana, then a little lock again. Then I'm trying to relax and go shoot right back to the chaturanga. Um, it's just a practice that you have to do. So again, here we go. Let's just learn to jump and I'm not gonna put my head down right now because I think the lesson should be divided into little sections. So here comes the jump. When I'm here, mobilizing my knee, hop, and activate the toe to kiss. Now activate the ankle to cross. Suck up on your belly. Walk your feet back, don't touch the floor. Tap, and then you can shoot back. You could learn to practice that first. Forget about the head down. The head down is gonna come in very simple once you finish the, you know, coming into it. And the shoot back, you're gonna get that a lot from Bakasana, but, the wraparound is the hardest. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's how I learned. And I did a lot of jumps back and forth. And before I knew it, I activated my heel. What else am I activating? My ankle, my calves, my shins, my inner thighs. And don't forget about your shoulder. This, this movement, my hands. My hands are shaped like a tiger paw, like a cat paw. Not flat, but I'm gripping the floor for a brake pad. You know, it's like when I'm going forward, I go like a brake, so I don't dive all the way over. And I also don't hurt myself when I'm setting up weight to cross my feet and get myself to the crown down. Okay, last one. And then we'll maybe put it all together. Okay, so here we go. Look to your center. Prepare your knuckles to bend. Look to your center. This is third eye drishti. My hips are high. I'm going to come and jump around in nice slow motion. And again, hooking the feet and to here. Look up. Keep your stomach up. Smile. Walk one at a time to set up. Back. 
to Bakasana and then to your upward dog. Now let's do with the head down all together. So then you can see how it grows into its whole position. Hmm, that's gonna be a challenge. Sometimes you might land more rough than other days. So you wanna make sure that you don't get excited and you continue to be focused, the Ramandiana, into your practice. And also don't forget your bandhas, your drishti, and your pranayama. Okay? So here we are. We're going to go slow and take it one step with everything together. Go ahead and prepare to squat your knees just to a soft bend. Again, look at my toes, the ball of my toes, but my heel is up. And when I wrap around, I'm ready to squeeze my arm, and there's a little bend in my elbows. So here it goes. And again, jump, hop. My bend, my elbows are slightly bended. Looking forward and taking the crown down. Again, we're going to come up, hold the pose. We're going to walk the feet back and shoot back to Chaturanga, and don't rush up. Sometimes it's better to slow down on the exit and hold the bakasana just a little bit and then float so you don't hurt your wrist and your pectoralis major and also your shoulder from position, okay? Um, that's just one day at a time. I don't know, I guess you should try it, right? So for the last part, let's see if we can do it again. Other than that, Enjoy happy learning, happy journeys, happy Bhuja Padasana. <laughs> and again, drawing down the knees. Focus, Drishti. Breath. And jump around. And head down. And head up. And don't forget, pull the Vakasana a little bit. And then shoot back. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale. Stretch your spine. <laughs> Woo! Namaste. Thanks for the request. <laughs> Keeps me sweaty. <laughs> Bye. Aloha. <laughs>